that ye should abstain from fornication, and that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles, which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed ye do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia, but we beseech you, brethren, that you increase more and more, and that you study to be quiet, and to do your own business, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you, that ye walk honestly toward them that are without, and that ye have a lack of nothing. The lesson this morning is taken pr pretty much from verses 1 and 12. We're going to call this lesson the walk that pleases God. The walk that pleases God. Verse 1 again says, furthermore then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus that ye have received, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk, and to please God, so he would abound more and more. And then in verse 12, he said that he may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that he may have a lack of nothing. Well, this lesson is for the faithful Christian is a reminder and an encouragement to continue with your walk with God, to stay the course, to not give in or to give up, to persevere until the end of your journey. That's the faithful Christian. Keep walking, keep doing the thing that you're doing. Stay the course. For the wayward Christian, this lesson is a warning call to repentance and to get back on course with your walk with God. By wayward, I'm referring to that Christian that attends services sometimes. That Christian that gives to the offering sometimes. That Christian that tries to pray to God sometimes. Uh, that wayward Christian, that Christian that comes to church services on Sunday to praise God after they were in, quote unquote, the club Friday and Saturday praising the devil. For the alien sinner, that person who has never accepted Christ, this lesson is to help you to see that walking with God is really the only walk that matters. Right. Every other walk is vain and worthless with no lasting value for the eternal destiny of your soul. Amen. You need to begin your walk with God today. Now, walking with God is a concept that deserves our undivided attention. Walking with God. Stay with me now as we, as we paint the picture this morning of the man and woman walking with God. Uh, the prophet Amos asked the time this question in the Old Testament in Amos 3 and 3. He says, can two walk together except they be agreed? What a wonderful, mighty thing and 
concept it is now to be walking in agreement with God. What a mighty thought to be walking in fellowship with God, the one who created us, the one who made us, and as we already saying this morning, the one who is beyond the azure blue. That God walking with and in fellowship with and in agreement with that God. The powerful meaning of this for that person who desires to walk with God is that walking with God enables you to be in agreement with God and to be in fellowship with God. Now to fully appreciate this, you must first fully appreciate God and the awesomeness of God. I contend that we really can't fully appreciate God until we go where God is. But to some degree, we can understand from the Word of God who God is. Now let me help you a little bit this morning. For instance, when you order your brand new Bentley Flying Spur or your Rolls Royce Phantom, you recognize that this is one of the finest automobiles ever made. You know that the craftsmanship is going to be exquisite. You know that the technology is going to be cutting edge. You know that the performance is going to be impressive and that the attention to detail is going to be impeccable. But it, it won't be until you actually sit in the finest of luxury leather seats and actually experience the performance and the technology and actually see for yourself all the attention to detail that you will really fully appreciate the true quality of such an automobile. And so I, I contend similarly for God, we read about the vastness of God, how he is everlasting and never tires. Isaiah said it this way, Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Isaiah 40 and verse 28. And then, of course, we read in the book of Genesis 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. God wasn't, didn't begin in the beginning, but that's our beginning. But in our beginning, God was already there. God is from everlasting to everlasting. What an awesome thought. Solomon says, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. Psalms 145 and verse 3. And then the Revelation writer uh, John said, and I saw a great throne. And him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. Can you imagine that great white throne? We can only, we can only uh, imagine in our mind what it would look like. But we won't really uh, truly understand the awesomeness of God's uh, sovereignty and his beauty and his awesomeness until we are able to see it for ourselves. Amen. And then, of course, the psalmist in Psalm 136, he says... Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. To him who alone doth great wonders, for his mercy 
endureth forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens for his mercy endureth forever. To him that stretched out the earth above the waters for his mercy endureth forever. To him that made great lights for his mercy endureth forever. The sun to rule by day for his mercy endureth forever. The moon and stars to rule by night for his mercy endureth forever. To him that smote Egypt in their firstborn for his mercy endureth forever and brought out Israel from among them for his mercy endureth forever with a strong hand and with a stretched out arm for his mercy endureth forever to him which divided the Red Sea into parts for his mercy endureth forever to him which divided the Red Sea into parts for his mercy endureth forever and made Israel to pass through the midst of it for his mercy endureth forever but overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea for his mercy endureth forever to him which led his people through the wilderness for his mercy endureth forever to him uh, which smote great kings for his mercy endureth forever and slew famous kings for his mercy endureth forever Sihon king of the Amorites for his mercy endureth forever and Og the king of Bashan for his mercy endureth forever and gave their land for inheritance for his mercy endureth forever even an heritage unto Israel his a servant for his mercy endureth forever who remembered us in our low estate for his mercy endureth forever and hath redeemed us from our enemies for his mercy endureth forever who giveth food to all flesh for his mercy endureth forever oh give thanks unto the God of heaven for his mercy endureth forever that's the God that we have an opportunity now to walk with, to be in agreement with, and to have fellowship with such a God. Amen, somebody. Amen. All right, so 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 we may not be able to, to fully appreciate who God is, but we do understand from scripture that God is holy, God is everlasting. God is omniscient. God is awesome in every way. And to therefore walk with him is a privilege beyond my description. It's an awesome privilege. And so then this morning we are, we are, we are talking about this walk that pleases God. Now, God wants you to walk along with him. God desires that you walk with him. You know, I have a grandson. I have, I have a couple of grandsons. The one I talk about all the time, little Mason. And you know, I get great joy, Brother Mayhew, out of spending time with that little fella, holding his hand, and walking with him. What am I trying to do as I walk with him? You know, I'm not just spending time. I'm, I'm trying to help him become a man one day. I know he got a father and all that, but I'm his grandfather. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I got a job too. And so my job is to help that little fellow become a man. And, 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 and I get great joy out of seeing him develop. Out of seeing him grow up and mature and each step is, is wonderful to see as he climbs a ladder of maturity. Now, he's only four and a half. He's got a long way to go. But, but I'm, I'm happy to see where he's at so far. And I, I'm here to tell you now, God is our example of a loving father. 
And God wants every one of his children to walk with him. Because God knows when we walk with him, it's going to be to our benefit. You know what? When I walk with little Mason, I'm going to be on my best behavior. Not that I'm not always on my best behavior, but you know what I'm saying. I got to make sure now that whatever he hears and whatever he sees is something he can copy and emulate. Hello. And when we walk with God, you can't help but to get better because God is perfect in every way. And so every one of us, every one of us ought to desire to walk with God. And to have that walk with God that pleases him. All right now. We are not talking about, when we talk about walking with God, we are not talking about a literal physical walk. We're talking about one's life and lifestyle being aligned with and in harmony with God. When you walk with God, you are in step with God, following his lead and direction. It is a walk that is conducted according to his will. Jeremiah put it this way. Oh Lord, I know. It is not a man that walketh to direct his own footsteps. In other words, my friends, we all need some help in this walk of life. And if you're smart, you're going to get your life in step with God. Because left to your own devices, you want to mess up every time. The walk that pleases God. The Bible says in Genesis 5, 24, and Enoch walked with God. Let me say it again. And Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. Now, 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 Enoch actually means dedicated. The name Enoch actually means dedicated. Now, uh, the Bible says in, uh, I believe it's in NIV, that Enoch walked faithfully with God. In the a New Living Translation, it says, Enoch walking in close fellowship with God. In the Amplified Bible, it says, Enoch walked in habitual fellowship with God. So, putting all that together, we understand that Enoch was taken by God because he was dedicated to walking habitually, faithfully, in close fellowship with God. Yeah. Did you get that? Yeah. Enoch was dedicated to walking habitually, faithfully, in close fellowship with God. Amen. That ought to be all of our goal in life. To habitually and faithfully walk in close fellowship with God. Now you cannot walk habitually, faithfully in close fellowship with God and be in the club on Friday and Saturday night. I'm sorry. I didn't get too many amens there, but that, that's the truth. Uh, this lifestyle that God wants us to have requires that we are with God all the time. Enoch was taken 
saved by God because, again, he dedicated his walk to be a habitual, faithful, close fellowship with God. Enoch was not a perfect man by no means. Only Jesus was perfect. Hello. But he was consistent and dedicated in his walk, so much so that God took him directly into the eternal realm. Now, don't, 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 don't miss this, because I don't want you to think because God took Enoch, that was a perfect man. That no man was perfect except Jesus. But God took him because of his dedication, dedication to his walk with God. We ought, to, we ought to take that as a, as, a, as a motivation in our own walk to be so like-minded and to be dedicated in our walk with God. Now, now that was Enoch. All right? Uh, and Enoch is on one end of the spectrum. Uh, but on the, on the other end of the spectrum, we have the children of Israel. All right? All uh, right? We had the children of Israel. Uh, they had just been led out of Egyptian bondage. They had just been uh, uh, at the edge of the Red Sea, thinking all was lost. God told Moses, stretch out your rod, and God parted the Red Sea. And God allowed the entire nation of, of Israel to walk across the Red Sea on dry ground. Not mud, on dry ground. What an awesome God. And then when they got to the other side and, and, and the Egyptian army was, was pursuing them in their chariots, God told Moses, stretch out your rod. And the waters congealed again and all the armies of the Egyptians were, were destroyed. Now, even though that had just happened, Come with me to Exodus chapter 16, beginning at verse number one. The Bible says, and they took their journey from Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came unto the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. Sound like some of us, don't it? And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. When we sat the flesh pots and when we did eat from the bread from, uh, to the full. For ye have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. He that complaining? Mm. Moses, what have you done? When we were in, you, you cried, they cried to God for 400 years. Release, release us, redeem us, free us. God heard their call and God brought them out of the land. And now, just moments after crossing the Red Sea, Moses, what have you done? Brought us out here to die of hunger. Murmuring and complaining. Short-sighted. Not recognizing and realizing how good God is. And then said Moses, and the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread down from heaven. See how good God is? I will rain bread down from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day that I may prove them, listen now, whether they will walk in my law or no. In the NIV and the New Living Translation, it says, whether they will follow my instructions. We talk about walking with God now. In the Amplified Version, it says, walk obediently in my instructions or law. So when we talk about walking with God, now we're talking about following God's instructions. We're talking about walking obediently in the law of God. That's what it means, well, that's what we're talking about when we say walk with God. 
of a walk that pleases God. We're talking about following God's instructions in your life. All right? Now, in order to follow God's instructions in your life, this lesson's not going to be long. I'm going to be done soon. In, in, in order to follow the instructions of God in your life, guess what? You've got to give some attention if you're going to be if you're going to be following His instructions. Guess what you've got to do? You've got to give some attention to the instructions given by God. Let's go back to our text in First Thessalonians. Chapter 4. Uh, he says, Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus that ye have, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so we would, so ye would abound more and more. Now, this reminds me of what Paul said over in the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 3, uh, and verse 15, when he says, But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of the truth. As we walk the walk that pleases God, I want you to understand that God has some requirements for us as we walk with him. Uh, God expects us to behave ourselves in the church, in the house of God. Y'all get mighty quiet on this morning. God expects us to behave ourselves. God has some uh, rules and regulations that he expects us to abide by as we walk with him. You know, going back to my analogy of my grandson, when he's walking with me, I, I'm not going to just let him act any old kind of way. I have some requirements for him. I have some expectations for him. And if, 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 and he needs to I, and he needs to understand now that when he's walking with Papa, <laughs> when he's walking with Papa, and there are certain things Papa expects from him. When you meet folk, be polite. When you're on the playground, be polite, be courteous. Share your toys with your friends. Don't try to be selfish. Uh, and in the house of God, God has some expectations for us. In his house. We ought to be loving one toward another. We ought to, we ought to, we ought to be encouraging one to another. We ought to be like family. Because <laughs> that's what we are. With family. And we ought to act like family. Family don't. Well, he's not. Well, honey, let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me. Let me go back a little bit here. Some families. Yeah. Some families, and then the families that got it together, they don't bicker and argue among themselves. You know, they love one another. And they demonstrate that love regularly. You see, uh, and so, so then Paul says to, to Timothy, he says, uh, uh, he says, listen, he says, listen, uh, if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God. God has some expectations for us. God wants us to be in agreement, to be in fellowship, and to be loving one toward another, and to treat each other right. Hello. Ah, uh, and, and we ought to be about the business of encouraging one another, 
to treat each other right. And he goes on to say in verse 2, going back to 1 Thessalonians, for you know that what commandment we gave you by the Lord Jesus. Now this is not, this is not, these requirements, these are not optional. Paul just said in verse 2, these are commandments that we gave you. They are not optional. If you think it's optional that you live the kind of life that God wants you to live, I got news for you. It ain't optional. Yeah. How many of you brothers been in the military? When you, when you, when you go in to Uncle Sam, you take that oath? Is it optional? That you do the things that you are told to do? When you are told to do something, guess what? When you're given a command, guess what? That's what you have to do. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And so listen, I want you to understand now, in the house of God, in the church of the living God, God has some commandments. Hello. I know some of us didn't think there were any commandments. I know some of us think that we had options and we could just live any kind of way, but Again, Paul says, for ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. Listen to what he says. For this is the will of God. This is what God wants. Even your sanctification that ye should abstain from fornication. Now listen, I know we don't teach on this a lot, but I'm just going to say the Bible teachers. Single folk, be single. If you're, not, if you're not married, stop acting like you're married. And if you don't act, if you don't act like you're married, you won't be having... You fill in the blank. Okay? Uh, and, and, and so, and, you know, we need, to, we, need to, we need to teach what God teaches. And we need to not be ashamed to teach what God teaches. We live in a society where everything goes. Tell me what doesn't go in our society today. Everything goes. And we live in a society where if you speak against everything that goes, you the one who gets ostracized. You the one who gets frowned upon. You're the one who is discriminatory because now you believe what God believes. So, because we live in a society where everything goes, before you know it, and it's happening already, and it's been happening for a while, these outside influences filter into the church. That's why we need to strongly teach even more so what the Bible teaches. Because when we get to the point where we are accepting what the world says versus what God teaches in his holy book of mind, We have lost our faith. And we are not walking the walk that pleases God. We need to get back to the old ways. All this new stuff, as far as I'm concerned, just, I need to leave it alone. Okay? I want to do what they did in the first century. I want to be as strict as they were in the first century. And I want to do the same walk that the apostles taught the first century Christians to walk. That's the same walk I want to walk, even today. And so, it's not a commandment, it's not, I'm sorry, it's not, a, it's not an option, it's a commandment, and it's the will of God, 
that we be sanctified, and that we abstain from fornication. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles, which know not God. Now listen, God is good. God is good. If you, if you can't contain yourself, the Bible says get married. That's all you have to do, get married. Young people, get married. Better to, better to, better to marry than to burn. All right? And when you get married, stay married. And don't get married till you find the right person to marry. And when you think you found the right person, don't rush into it, because the person you think is the right person may turn out not to be the right person if you rush into it. Don't want to find out they're not the right person after you married them. Find that out before you marry them. Then you can say, bye-bye. And no harm done. But once you marry them, Thing goes on to say, for God, verse 6, thank you, my brother, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we have also forewarned you and testified. Listen, we, we, need to, we need to treat each other right. And if somebody treats you wrong, let God handle that. You do everything you can to mend the situation and to bring us together again as brothers. But if that brother don't want to do right, let God handle it. I'm not going to look at you cross-eyed because, you know, then I put my own soul in jeopardy. I'm not going to be mean and, and mean-spirited. But now I put my own soul in jeopardy. But, 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 but if, if something happens between you and a brother and you everything you can to get it right and they don't want to act right, that's between them and God. Turn over to God. Do all the things the Bible says do. Take two or three. Bring it to the church. And then if that don't work, then the Bible says to be a heathen and publican. And you've done what you could do. And then finally, for God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. You see, this walk that pleases God is a holy walk. Now you need some help in this world to walk a holy walk. You need some down on your knees help in this world to walk this walk that pleases God. Because we live in a messed up world. Children nowadays grow up in a world where, as we just said, everything goes. And they're exposed to so much ugliness from an early age. My daughter's a school teacher. I hear a lot of stuff. You'd be amazed at the kind of stress and issues that kindergartners have. First readers had. And you know why my sister we said we had that, we had that discussion this morning? It's because the home is messed up. The home is broken in so many instances. And, and in the church, that's why, that's the beauty of the church. We learn in the church what the home ought to be. Because we're walking with God. God is instructing us as we walk with him. And he shows us and tells us what the home ought to be. And we ought to follow his God. And so, so many of these young children, the age of my grandson, they already messed up. You know why? Because they've seen parents cussing and doing all kinds of stuff at a young age. Their innocence is already gone. Four years old, innocence is gone. That's a shame. First grade, no 
about sex. That ought not to be. Innocence is gone. What is wrong with people when they when they have these parties and all the things that are going on and let little children observe all these things? That's the kind of world we live in. But thanks be to God, we can have a walk with God and we can know how we ought to behave. And we can follow God's guide, follow God's way, and be the kind of people that please God because we, we want to walk with him. We choose to walk with him. We desire to walk with him. And we are anxious to learn everything we can that will help us to walk with him even more. The walk that pleases God. There's, there's so much more in this lesson uh, that we could get into. Time won't allow it. But, but let me tell you this. Uh, walking with God ought to be every human being's desire. Ought to be every human being's goal in life. And, 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 and especially the child of God, we need to pray to God that we have that walk with him that we have that walk with him daily. John said in John 8 and verse 2, as I close, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. My friend, if you're not walking with God, you're walking in darkness. But when you can walk with God in fellowship with him, then you can walk in the light of life. Psalmist says, thy word, O Lord, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. Well, how do I get it to be able to have this kind of walk? Because I want to have this walk with God. Well, you got to get in Christ, my friend. If you want to have this walk with God, you got to get in Christ. As Paul said in Romans 6, he says, no, you're not. That so many of us as were baptized into Christ, were baptized into his death, therefore we are buried with him by baptism, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. You can walk in the newness of life once you are in Christ. You want to change your life? Get into Christ. You want to have a new walk, a better walk? Get into Christ. And have fellowship with him and he'll show you the way. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm so appreciative of what Paul says in Romans chapter 8 when he says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Yes, when you have that walk that pleases God, you're walking uh, after the spirit, guided by the spirit. <coughs> Even when you will, from time to time, falter along the way, God is so good. He says, all you gotta do is repent. Ask for my forgiveness and continue your walk, amen? And just like when my grandson and walk with him, if he stumbles down and falls, I don't kick him when he down. I say, son, come on, get on up. Papa got you. Dust you off, give you a big old hug, give him a big old kiss. Come on, son, let's continue walking. Yeah. And I love him just the same. That's how God loves. God loves you just the same. Pick you up and, 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 and enjoy your continual walk with the Father. That's the kind of God we serve. Oh my goodness. What a privilege. Do you want to have this walk this morning? You desire to have this walk. 
We're going to be standing in just a moment. We're going to be singing a song of encouragement. If you want this walk this morning, get into Christ. Now, the Bible says in the first chapter, all commandments of hero is the Lord our God is one Lord. You must hear the good news. This is how you get into Christ. Hear the good news. Believe it. The Bible says Hebrews 11 says, without faith, it's impossible to please him, but he that comes to God must believe that he is. He is the reward of them that diligently seek him. You must believe the good news, the gospel, that Jesus came and died for your sins, and buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Jesus said, I tell you, neighbor, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Romans 13, 3 and 5. Are you willing this morning to turn away from sin, turn away from your walk, and turn towards God to walk with him? You ought to be. God's waiting and, 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 and anxious for you to walk with him. What about you? Do you want to walk with him? Are you willing to confess him to be God's son? He said, you confess me, I'll confess you before my father, which is him, according to Matthew 10, verse 32. And then be baptized in the water of your baptism, that for the remission of all your sins. Hey, God, God. And you be baptized this morning. You can begin your walk with the Father, a walk that pleases God. If you're, a, if you're here this morning, you know, as a Christian, you've done those things contrary to God's will, God still loves you. God still wants you to have that close fellowship, walk with him. But it's up to you. He can't force you. It's up to you. If you're here this morning, you stand a guilty distance either way from God. We're going to sing this song right now. I encourage you to come to God.